But first tonight, things are changing fast, in case you haven't noticed, much too fast, actually. People can't metabolize change at this pace. That's not just Fox News viewers or elderly Republican men, it's this whole species. Human beings are not designed for relentless, abrupt changes to the way they live or the way they think. And for most of human history, they didn't have to deal with those changes because they didn't happen much. Societies evolved slowly. Fourth century France was very much like 14th century France. For a thousand years, most people in France spend their lives following domesticated animals around the field and living in thatched huts. And then in the 1700s, someone perfected the steam engine and nothing was ever the same. Life for average people began to change faster and faster and then exponentially faster. And this continued on. It continues now to the present day, a moment in which nearly every morning you awake to a brand new world. If you're over 40, you may have trouble recognizing your own country. It's just too unfamiliar. Now, the self-righteous children on social media don't care to notice this. And when they do, they dismiss it, any complaint about change, as bigotry. But it's not bigotry. It's human nature. Abrupt change causes social chaos, always. Human beings develop customs and habits and generational expectations for a reason. It's not random. Continuity is comforting to people. If you eliminate familiar things overnight, societies fracture. Populations tend to explode. We've seen that happen. The last industrial revolution, in the end, provoked armed revolutions. Hundreds of millions of people died. Germany got Hitler. Eastern Europe got Stalinism. Yes, we did wind up with antibiotics in the end. You could thank technology for that, and we do. But we also got genocide and atomic bombs. There's a lesson here. If you're going to change things, go slowly. Choose the incremental over the immediate. Explain yourself as you do it. Reassure people. Acknowledge the reality of evolutionary biology. It is real. Human beings are not born to be machine components. You can't just bang out improved versions of your citizens on a 3D printer. People in real life are complicated and stubborn and hard to control. Even the most open-minded ones get jumpy when suddenly everything's different. Obviously, and you'd think it would be obvious. Wise leaders would know that intuitively. If you're going to have relentless technological change, and apparently we are, you cannot inflict relentless social change and expect your society to survive. Things will fall apart if you do that. That's guaranteed. Yet that is exactly what our leaders are currently doing. They're changing everything, whether we like it or not. A new language, new values, new biology, new curricula, new social mores and hiring standards and body types. A brand new national population. And then, because that's still not enough change, a whole new system of government. All of that in three months. What will the consequences of that change, of that revolution be? In your bones, you know the answer. It's terrifying. And it doesn't have to happen. What America needs now more than anything is a pause, a moment to catch our national breath, take stock, assess what just happened, a lot happened, and calmly consider the best way forward. You want unity for the country? We all do. And that might bring us unity. But no, the kaleidoscopic barrage of unending change continues. Yesterday, they informed us, they plan to dismantle the last trusted branch of our government, the Supreme Court. Here's a congressman from New York explaining why they're doing it. His name is Mondaire Jones. He's 33 years old. He went to Stanford and Harvard Law School, meaning that in his short life, he has produced essentially nothing. So none of it is real to him. So he's happy to blow it up. Watch. Our democracy is in crisis. The insurrection on January 6th made that clear. This crisis didn't arrive overnight or by accident. The Supreme Court helped bring us here. In fact, the court has been actively dismantling our democracy for years. It gutted the protections of the Voting Rights Act and paved the way for a new era of racist voter suppression. It helped install Donald Trump in the White House and he returned the favor by appointing more justices who are hostile to our democracy. We, the people, can break the far-right, anti-democratic grip on our democracy. We can expand the Supreme Court. And together, we can finally restore our government by the people instead of government by the powerful. So the Supreme Court did the insurrection of January 6th, the QAnon court, if you will. Bet you didn't know that. Mondaire Jones didn't know it either. He was just reading what they wrote for him on the card. 
Who's the they, by the way? That was a slick video. Didn't make it in his basement. It cost money to make that video. So where'd the money come from? We'd love to know. Was it funded by some of the big corporations that have just finished telling us that asking people to show ID when they vote is Jim Crow racism? Possible. We called around today to find out. We asked the CEO of Coca-Cola, James Quincy, and the CEO of Delta, Ed Bastian, longtime head of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Merck CEO, Ken Frazier. All of those business titans have been happy to weigh in with full force recently on what form of government the rest of us must have. It's their business. It's up to them now. So we wondered what their view was of turning our highest court into a legislative body, of making our last officially nonpartisan institution into something that is openly partisan and therefore trusted by no one. We can only guess what they think about that because they didn't get back to us. Apparently, they're no longer so worried about democracy. Whatever Biden wants, just don't take our money. And they know where Joe Biden stands because a few days ago, the White House formed something called the Presidential Commission on the Supreme Court of the United States. The job of that commission was, and we're quoting now, principal arguments in the contemporary debate for and against Supreme Court reform. It's the last phrase that matters, Supreme Court reform. That's not court packing. It's not what FDR did. It's Supreme Court reform. And the White House says it just wants to study the subject objectively. <laughs> right. The purpose, obviously, is to signal that court packing now has the endorsement of the Biden White House. At a press conference this afternoon, some of the most powerful Democrats in the Congress made it very clear they've received that message. Some people will say we're packing the court. We're not packing it. We're unpacking it. Senator McConnell and the Republicans packed the court over the last couple of years, as Senator uh, uh, Markey outlined. So this is a, a, a reaction to that. Some people might say we're packing the court. No, we're unpacking it. Woo! Props to the 23-year-old communications aide who thought of that line. That was Jerry Nadler, of course, of New York. He's the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Kind of a big job when you're talking about courts. But he wasn't there alone this afternoon. Hank Johnson was there of Georgia. Remember Hank Johnson? He's the congressman slash amateur geologist who once speculated in a committee hearing that the island nation of Guam might capsize due to overpopulation. That's Hank Johnson. He's the best. And Hank Johnson today offered his assessment of how big the Supreme Court should be. But this natural expansion stopped after the Civil War, leaving us today with the historical oddity of 13 circuit courts of appeal and only nine justices. I believe it's time to go back to this tradition and have at least 13 justices. Oh, at least. We gotta go back to before the Civil War, says Hank Johnson. It's time to, quote, go back to tradition. Really? You wonder what other antebellum traditions Hank Johnson wants to bring back to the United States. Sadly, he didn't tell us. Until now, Hank Johnson's party had us completely convinced that all earlier American traditions were white supremacy. But somehow, the one that isn't is 13 members on the Supreme Court. That's what Hank Johnson just told us. Now, these people are genuinely radical. The good news is they're also stupid. Ed Markey, who served in Congress for like 40 years, stood up and repeated the same line. Only by packing the Supreme Court full of partisan Democrats can we... It's hard to read this. Can we restore the legitimacy of the Supreme Court? And I'm disappointed to say that too many Americans question the court's legitimacy. The consequence is that the rights of all Americans, but especially uh, people of color, women, and our immigrant communities are at risk. We have a stilted, illegitimate 6-3 conservative majority on the court that has caused this crisis of confidence in our country. Now, first of all, it's kind of hard to take Ed Markey, who's like pushing 100 years old very seriously when he's talking about how we need to empower women and people of color when he's occupying a Senate seat in an overwhelmingly Democratic state. Hey, Ed Markey, why don't you resign this afternoon and give that seat to a female person of color? Oh, you don't want to do that? Because you're a liar. But the best part was... People don't think the court is legitimate, and that's why we need to pack it with Democrats. He was standing in front of a sign that said, expand the court. He wanted you to forget it wasn't that long ago that he was telling us, quote, we need nine. That meant nine justices. Do you remember that? No, they don't want you to remember that. And that's not the only thing they don't want you to remember. When Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, Ed Markey was one of so many Democrats who urged Republicans to respect 
her dying wish. Quote, Mitch McConnell has steamrolled through a confirmation hearing, going against precedent and against Justice Ginsburg's, Ginsburg's dying wish. That's what Ed Markey told us. So even from the grave, Supreme Court justices get to determine who replaces them. But now, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, rest in peace, is no longer useful to people like Ed Markey, so they want you to forget what she herself said about court packing about a year before she died. I have heard that there are some people on the Democratic side who would like to increase the number of judges. If anything would make the court appear partisan, it would be that. One side saying, when we're in power, we're going to enlarge the number. Now, at the time, it was, I think, a federal law that all Democrats had to agree with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, so Joe Biden did. I would not get into court packing. We, we had three justices. Next time around, we lose control. They had three justices. We began to lose any credibility for the court has at all. <laughs> we can go on and on. We've got a lot of tape. These are all sound bites we can play you of Democrats telling you, no, 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 we need nine justices. But we're not going to. Brazen hypocrisy is starting to bore us. Yes, they are liars with no principles who will say anything for power. Got it. Now, in real life, the bill that we're talking about may not pass, but the sad thing is it doesn't matter whether or not it does because the damage has already been done. We've just watched people who are paid to care about the country prove that they don't. They'd wreck the place as long as they got control of it. That's not a reassuring message. A lot of Americans are highly anxious right now. They are distrustful. Some are paranoid. They don't think that anything, none of their institutions, is on the level. But instead of reassuring them that everything's going to be okay, leading Democrats just showed them that they have every reason to feel the way they do.